identical quadruplets are a miracle of nature. The knives. Out of 61 million people in the whole of the UK, the Carles girls are the only ones. This year, they've reached a pivotal time in their young lives. They're going to school. And turning five. When I grow up, I'm going to be a nice big butterfly. We follow them out into the big wide world and discover just how identical the girls really are. Polly, can you see where you are? No. And how different. You want to open a box? No. You don't want to open any boxes. And a trip to America Hello. gives their parents a glimpse of what the future holds. The thought of them going off on their own in different directions made me feel very anxious. This is an intimate portrait of an extraordinary family. It tries to answer the big question. What's it really like to be four of a kind? So do you know what a quad is? Yeah. What's a quad? Um, when we like quad bikes and I like them. What's a quad? I don't know. You don't know? No. Are you a quad? Yeah. So why are you a quad? Because I'm four. Um, it's a triplet. Um, it means you're all the same. Ellie, Georgie, Holly and Jessica live with their mum and dad in a small village in rural Bedfordshire. We moved into this house, or I should say my husband moved into this house, the week after the girls were born. And it's six doors away from my mum and dad, because we knew we were going to need some help, so... As you can see, we've got four coat pegs, <laughs> four coats, and more four coat pegs over there, and four coats and lots of shoes. <laughs> Being a father to four identical girls has earned yeah. Dad Jose an unusual nickname. <laughs> the quad father, as my friends like to call me. Well, some of my friends, yeah, you're the man, you're the man, you know, whatever. I don't know. I'm just me. Here's one, look. Feet through. Good Being girl. a parent is always Feet hard work, but for Mum Julie, even the most basic tasks are four times more difficult. Butter. Where does butter come from? The identical thing, people don't get the identical thing. I get a lot of very silly comments and very stupid comments from people not necessarily thinking about what they're saying. Three, four. Are they one of each sex? Yeah. How many times did you have to have sex to get those? <laughs> so double. Twice. Twice, yeah. And, you know, things like they're in a quad buggy, all dressed exactly the same, pink coat. What you got there, boys? What? What do you say? What do you say to that? Oh, look at his funny nose. <laughs> Julie and Jose married in 2005 <laughs> after a whirlwind <laughs> romance. Jose had a son from a previous relationship, but both in their late 30s, they were keen to start a family together. After a year, we discovered that we were having a few problems uh, conceiving, and so we went to have some tests, where we, whereupon we discovered that, um, probably more down to do with my age, I wasn't ovulating every month, so my cycles were a bit irregular and I wasn't producing eggs every month, so, you know, pregnancy was going to be quite difficult. We had discussions about using whatever methods um, when she fell pregnant, naturally, and uh, that's where it all began. And then sort of looked forward to the, the next months, if you like, of planning and having a baby. A baby being the operative word. <laughs> so we, you know, lay down on the bed and the sonographer puts the gel on your belly. And then he gets the tool and he tells you to look in the screen. And I sort of looked at him and he, he went a bit grey, whitish, if you like, and this is a multiple pregnancy. And I sort of looked at Julie and smiled, because you, you, just, you just think twins, and a, a million things went through my head. Oh, a boy and a girl, and, a, you know. And he said, no, no, this is really, really serious. He said, there's actually four babies in here. At which point, Julie burst out crying. My legs gave way. I literally was on the floor on my knees. 
Julie was only the 27th woman in the world to naturally conceive monochorionic quads. These super rare babies are formed when one fertilized egg splits to create four genetically identical embryos, all sharing the same placenta. The odds of their conception are one in 64 million. The family were referred to a specialist hospital in London. Today they've come back to meet Dr. Keelan O'Donoghue, one of the medics who helped them through the pregnancy. Oh my goodness. Hi, I can't believe. Oh my goodness. Hi, okay. How are you? Lovely to see you again. You're so like you. With you. Of course you get you get involved, um, especially when you see um, a couple uh, quite frequently. And I think with them, we were aware that it was a very um, unusual pregnancy. We were aware of some of the complications that might, that might happen. We were aware that the couple were really positive and really wanted a good outcome and very hopeful, of course, therefore for them that nothing bad would happen. Mum, George, did you have a picture when George was eating the egg? No. I have one of those. Julie was also being cared for by a hugely experienced medical team. They warned her that the rarity of her pregnancy held huge risks for both her and her unborn children. This professor has never seen monochorion quads survive. Um, he said he's, I think he said he had one in his lifetime and they didn't survive. Four little blobs in mummy's tummy. That's all you were, little blobs. Just a few weeks into her pregnancy, the medical team gave Julie the stark truth about her baby's chances. The risks of them surviving and being normal are 20 per cent. Um, at this point, it makes me feel quite emotional. Um, we were asked if we would like to reduce. The official term really is multi-fetal pregnancy reduction. And what it means is ending the life of one baby to allow the others to continue and have a better chance. Medical jelly. So they were offered um, selective termination of the pregnancy, preferably reducing from four babies to two babies. And then obviously it's explained to us that because they are all closely connected with one placenta, whatever you do to one um, can affect the other three. And we um, can't play God, so we decide we're going to go for the pregnancy and stick through it. It's all the time. Yeah. I was healthy and I felt that I wanted to give it the best shot because that was the fairest thing for me to do. Um, and I didn't see any reason why we couldn't have four children. Despite the dangers, Julie continued with her pregnancy. After just seven months, baby Jessica was struggling to survive in the womb. The quads were delivered by emergency caesarean at 29 weeks. Each girl weighed less than three pounds. This room is, you know, it, I was, it was weird because I couldn't be a mum, even though I was a mum, because I couldn't cuddle them, I couldn't breastfeed them, couldn't do anything. I just had to sit, really, and watch and wait. So it's quite weird coming back and seeing four cots in the room and thinking that they were that small ones, you know. Of the four sisters, Jessica was the smallest at just one pound nine ounces. For three days, her life hung in the balance. She just back on a dream but obviously you know very emotional inside and but mostly happy time I don't really remember being I don't, all the anxiety that we went through sort of prior to the birth and afterwards for them certainly for the first few days it's 
play down a bit, and it's just remember it being a happy time. Guess, and looking forward to getting them home. After eight weeks in hospital, the girls arrived home, and ever since, Holly, Ellie, Jessica and Georgie have spent every moment of their lives together. <laughs> the girls fought the odds and survived. And for the first four years of their lives, everything they've had has been identical. From the food they eat, to the toys they play with, to the clothes they wear. Um, sometimes the girls have heard people saying to me, why are your children all dressed the same? And they have actually asked me, I mean, why are we all dressed the same? So I've just said that's because it's the way you like it. I don't know if it's right or wrong. I don't know why it would be wrong, to put it that way. But I don't, I don't know, dressing them differently. I don't, I don't know, it just sort of doesn't sit comfortably with me at the moment. Do you and your sisters? Yeah. Do you all look the same or do you all look different? We all look the same. Exactly the same? Yeah. Can you tell the difference between you and your sisters? I don't know. Having all come from the same egg, the girls are genetically identical. Until the age of one, Mum Julie could only tell her daughters apart by writing their initials on their feet. Georgie to me. And the girls laughing. can still sometimes struggle. Wow. Holly, can you see where you are? No. No. Holly, my next year's here. No. That's Holly, well done. Up till now, the girls' lives have always revolved around the home, the family, and each other. <laughs> They're a team. They've become so much of a team now that they tend to do everything together. <laughs> when I take them anywhere, I feel like I'm David Beckham's minder or something like that. You know, I'm I'm partially famous because I'm with them. <laughs> do Do you struggle with them? Do you struggle to tell the girls apart? No, not if they are facing me. If they're facing me, I find it very easy. Definitely, face someone, yes. Yeah. Hello there. Are you all right, Ellie? Oh, that's Georgie, actually. It's not Ellie. I'm just proving that I know what I'm doing here. This year, the girls turn five and will be spreading their wings for the first time. I worry a little bit that it'll be very difficult for outsiders to break in because the relationship they have with themselves is going to be better than almost anything anybody else can produce. Tomorrow is the first day of a new term at primary school and the girls' bond will be put to the test. My little babies aren't little babies anymore and they're going out into the big wide world and, and having input from outside influences, not just me, and what that'll be like, and, and it's the, oh, it's hard, isn't it? This year, Britain's only identical quads are turning five. It's going to be a year of big changes, and it all starts with school. They, they said I'd woken them up too early because it was still dark outside. <laughs> she still said she didn't want to go. <laughs> Ready? Up, two, three. Oh! They requested I put their initials on the collar of their shirt so that they didn't have to keep asking who was who because they felt that that wasn't fair on the, on the children, which is fine. Thank you. I never imagined this point because it's difficult to imagine having four babies in the first place. Putting their uniforms on, they just seem so grown up. They're not little girls anymore. Right, I'm in. I'm missing statues. Up until their first day at school, the girls have never spent a whole day away from their home and family. Wait for mummy. Okay. Stop. You don't want to fall over. I like the way you're not coming. Well, one of the first times when I saw them, it was the summer fair, and they all skipped off together, and their hair just bounced. I thought, do you know, even their hair is bouncing identically. <laughs> so I thought, goodness me, I am never going to tell them apart. Yeah. What are you making there? Ah. 
love you. Have a good day. I love you. Love you. Have a good day. Have a good day, Mum. Thank you and Jimmy. See you later. Bye bye. I feel a little bit sad saying goodbye because it's um, a big step, you know, and I'm handing care over to someone else. I suppose there's a bit of me that feels that I oh, wish they would have been a little bit sad at leaving, <laughs> but no, it's easier for me that they, they weren't unhappy about it and that they were quite confident and quite happy to just go. The girls are in a class of just 14 children which means they'll make up more than a quarter of the pupils. So swap them out. No, take them. Living in a small village, most of the children have known each other since birth. But that doesn't stop the Carla's girls from causing some confusion. So, Maisie, who's this? Jessica. How do you know it's Jessica? Because I know her face. And how does she look different from her sisters? <laughs> Because they've got their colours. Yeah. Scott, do you think they all look the same or do you think they all look different? Well, they have the same lunch boxes. They settled in really quickly. Sometimes you felt that they moved as a unit, so that wasn't easy because sometimes you felt that was four against one. <laughs> They were a bit mean when another child wanted to come and sit down, but um, they just were desperate to be together. The girls are settling in at school, but for Dad Jose, work couldn't be further away from domestic life. In terms of my position, I'm the technical manager here at Sandy, and this is where it all begins. He works for the biggest paving manufacturers in the UK. So sometimes I get to the end of the day um, and I've had a long day here and I know that when I go home I've got you know, a good three, four hours of uh, work or entertainment, whatever you want to call it. And sometimes yeah, I'll, do, I'll sit here and have ten minutes and have a coffee and uh, just prepare myself for, for chaos or cuddles or whatever it may be when I, when I walk through the door. Jose hasn't just got four identical daughters to look after. He has to make time for his teenage son as well. Having five women in the house all the time can get a bit much. Come down here to watch Jose playing football once a week or once a fortnight, depending. And uh, yeah, it's just nice. Nice to get out in the fresh air and see him do his, his boy thing. I don't feel left out at all because, like, my dad, he plays with him a lot and he, like, I have fun with him and he takes me to football and that, so I don't really feel left out when I'm here. Bringing up such a large family is a big burden for both parents. The fact that I'm not working anymore makes me wonder how I actually fitted it all in in the first place. There's just always things to do, like housework, cleaning, washing, tidying, organising, cooking, you know. I have to make every plate look the same, otherwise... Um, if one of them looks different, they'll wonder why, or they'll want to, they'll want whatever the other one's got. So I try to make every plate look exactly the same. You may think that's strange. This is life living with four identical girls, you see. When Julie returns to work, she'll need to depend on Jose more than ever to help with the kids. <laughs> And mum and dad's parenting styles are always compatible. <laughs> right, time to come down. Right. Come down. Sit down. <laughs> Not like that. Trouble is, with four excited girls, even simple things like bedtime become difficult. What's going on up there then? They're high top. Not my fault. What the bloody? 
bloody hell is that? Once they're like that, they're in they're in a zone that you can't no human can break into. It's that that foursome thing that they have. It's quite a fierce bond that they they seem to have that you just can't break. And once they're in that doing that kind of thing, this is no point in saying stop doing that because it's just not going to. Probably what's happening now is what I've started in the bath. Of course I've gone in there and got them going and wound them up for bedtime and it's not very good. Do you get cross with them for winding them up? Yeah. The girls have been at school for a term and their individual personalities are becoming more obvious. Is Daddy good at making me dinner? Not very good at this. Georgie is very challenging. She will challenge everything you say. She will always be right and you will be wrong. She's even said to me, Mummy, you don't know best, I do. And Ellie is the most laid back. So where was Ellie? Where is Ellie? Ha I don't know, I don't she know. just wants to be happy all the time, you know, and wants everybody else to be happy. Holly is little minx. She likes being the centre of attention, definitely. Who's your favourite boy at school? Nathan. I love him. Here is Sam. Is he your boyfriend? Yeah. Did he give you a kiss? Yes, he does. What do you mean he's been giving you kisses, Holly? Because he loves me. My best friend is Jessica Carlin. Who's your best friend, Ellie? Georgie. My favourite friend is Holly. Who's your best friend, Jess? Maisie. Jess has always been slightly different. She's sort of beats to a different drum. Always been a little bit more independent, <laughs> out there on her own, quite happy in her own skin. Are you going to say bye-bye to Mummy? Bye-bye to Mummy. Bye! Mummy. bye. <laughs> well, kiss! Jessica has been invited by her right, best friend Maisie to go on her Jessica. first play date. So, if you say goodbye to Jess. Bye. See you later. Slowly, slowly. This is a very new thing. This is the first time this has ever happened where one of them has gone to play um, with someone else on their own without them all together. So, this is quite new for us. What do you think about Jess going to Maisie's house? Don't know. Don't know. I miss her. You miss her. The girls are growing up and changing, and it's raising questions for mum and dad. I know the personalities aren't the same. Why is that? Because they're identical. Surely their personalities should be the same, but they're not. I'm pretty ignorant on these things. I'm not a medical person, but I'd love somebody to come and tell me how it all works and why. Dr Bonamy Oliver and Dr Alison Pike are psychologists specialising in child development. They both have a particular interest in multiple siblings. Twins these days, dime a dozen. Quadruplets, <laughs> wow! You know, this, this is fascinating. Julie and Jose have brought the girls to London's Institute of Psychiatry to get answers to some big questions about their unique children. What's unique about the girls is the fact that there are four of them. There are four of them growing up in the same environment of the same age with, you know, very similar needs and wants and wishes and so on at the same time. It gives a really nice natural experiment to um, try and explore and tease out um, what's nature and what's nurture. Hi. 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 I'm Alison. I'm Bonnie. Bonnie. Hi, Hi. I'm Julie. Hi. I'm Alison. The girls will be put Hi. through a series Hi. of tests. Hi. Sisters, what to do? I tell my sisters what to do, but they won't won't do it. What the results show will be a surprise for both the doctors and mum and dad. At the Institute of Psychiatry, the UK's only identical quads are undergoing a series of tests. What I'm interested in is seeing whether particular assessments might uncover some nuanced differences between the girls. They're genetically identical, they have shared the same uh, rearing environment, same parents, same school. Um, and so I am a little bit worried that um, our assessments may um, only show similarity. 
um, among the girls. Hi, Georgie. Are you going to come and play my game? Yeah. The first oh, task thank you. is the pirate test. Now, tell me, Georgie, can you sit... It's a task that's designed to show how the children might differ in um, their risk-taking. So it's a kind of ga almost like a gambling task. There are nine treasure chests that have got stickers in. And you can open as many treasure chests as you like. But in one of the treasure chests, there's a pirate. And he's going to take your stickers away if you open the box with him. Would you like to open a box and see if you can find a sticker? As the experts predicted, Georgie, and Holly and, and Jessica game. all behave in a similar way and seem happy to take a few calculated risks. <gasps> However, you know Ellie's now, reaction is a surprise. Which one's got the pirate? I'm not going to tell you, that's the game. Do you want to open a box? No. You don't want to open any boxes? That's fine then, you can have your lovely stick. What really stood out about Ellie in the risk-taking task is she's the only one who didn't want to open any of the boxes. But even Ellie wasn't anxious about it. She was sure that she wasn't going to open them. But the risk-taking task did show big differences in their um, impulsiveness. Next up, Alison takes each girl through the puppet test. I don't tell my sisters what to do. I do tell my sisters what to do. How about you? I tell my sisters what to do, but they won't, won't do it. So what this puppet interview is designed to do is to get children's own perspectives on family life, on their relationship with mum and dad, with brothers, brothers or sisters. Talking to you. When I'm at home, I like to play with my sisters. When I'm at home, I like to play alone. How about you? I like to play with my sisters. They were actually very similar in a lot of ways, so they all um, were talking about their relationship with mum and with dad and with each other in extremely positive terms. Hi, Jess. I've been looking forward to meeting you. Jess's interview with the puppets definitely stood out. Yeah. Something else. I don't cry a lot. I cry a lot. How about you, Jess? No. no. She was more bold in, you know, stroking Iggy and Ziggy. She was less willing to follow the exact protocol of the interview. So she stood out for me as being a bit more of an individual. Does your mum spend more time with your sisters or more time with you? Me. Ah, that sounds like my mum. She was the one girl who did report parental favoritism. So all the other girls said, you know, no, mum and dad treat us exactly the same. But according to Jess, she was the favourite. And it wasn't just much. the behavioural tests that marked Jessica Let's out. Do another one, shall we? A What's star. that? Star. I'm a star. You're a star. This game is testing um, what we call phonological awareness. It's testing skills that are linked to reading. Can you find two that start with the same sound? Sun and star. Sun and star. So yeah, For some of them, the, the um, sort of concept of taking the first letter off the um, word was quite difficult. If you take the g off gate. gate, what do you get left with? Fence. If I take the b off bath, what's left? Half. It's quite a tough test for this age. Jess, she sort of flew through everything. She did really well on all of it. She really got hold of the task. If you take the s off scarf, what do you get left with? Off. Well done. Jessica has already shown signs of independence, being the first to go on play dates without her sisters. And it's her results that have proved the most revealing. I suppose when she was born, we probably did treat her with a little bit more delicacy, maybe for want of a better word. She was actually going to die, which is why the birth was planned for okay. the next day. Mm -hmm. The other thing also that I just remembered was she, I would leave her alone more because mm -hmm. right. she wasn't doing the trying to walk or try, you know, so she, she'd be quite happy left on her own. And I always remember thinking this is going to affect the way she becomes as a, as a person and it probably has a little bit. You know, we are all a product of our experience. Those tiny differences you were talking about in terms of the way you hold them or the way you speak to them, um, small as they are, it's those tiny differences in their environmental experience that can make a big difference to who they are.
biologically, physically, personality-wise, they certainly are not identical. Um, so our expectation is that as the girls grow older, that they will become more and more distinct over time, more and more individual. The tests have given mum and dad a better idea of the vital part experience plays in their kids' development. Treating them in different ways because of maybe, you know, like Jess was small so you treated her with more care, that has had a knock-on effect with the way she is, is piecing all that together and understanding that it's okay, this is, this is why. And like their very first swimming lesson, every event of their lives will be important. Here. Julie understands that her daughters are growing and changing, but as Britain's only mum of identical quads, there's been no one for her to turn to for parenting advice. When I first found out I was having quadruplets, I did try and contact a couple of other families, but you know, they never called me back, so I sort of gave up after that because I was too busy being a mum and looking after them. In search of help, she's been forced to look further afield and has recently made contact with an American family who've also got four identical girls. They've invited her to come and visit. Hello, Julie. My, my family is very excited to meet you. The girls' names are Callie, Kendra, Megan and Sarah, age 18 very recently. Teenagers, wow. Can't imagine what mine are going to be like when they're teenagers. Mummy's going to go tomorrow. She's going to go on the aeroplane and go to their home and meet them. Maybe some people would say, oh, you shouldn't look into the future, but it'd be nice to have an idea of what lies ahead. Bye-bye, darling. Bye -bye. Love you. Oh, oh strawberry chops. <laughs> OK, don't forget the light in the kitchen. <laughs> Parted statement, don't forget the light. Love you. Love you. How are you feeling? A little bit emotional. <laughs> but excited as well. I can't see it. Julie's travelled nearly no, 4,000 miles to come face to face with her no, future. No, I can't see it, Kendra. Hey, your rear view mirror is right in front of your face. Oh. This leads me right out of town. No, oh, not okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's on. <laughs> I've, got all, I've got all this to come. Callie, Kendra, Megan and Sarah are from Buffalo in the state of Minnesota where they live with their mum, Naomi, yeah, and older brother, Travis. It's so nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. I want to know what life's going to be like for me <laughs> over the next 15 years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right now, you think it's competitive over what shirts are wearing. You just wait. There'll be more clothes fights than you can ever no, imagine. No, it depends. It's oh, daily. 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 Oh. Probably the most important tip you need is to have label labels. Because otherwise, they will fight and fight, and no one will know know whose stuff is what, so always label it. Being teenage girls, one of their favorite ways to spend a Saturday is at the local mall. I like this shirt, like, I like this one. This is the one I just got. Filling me with terror. Can't imagine how I'm gonna ever afford it. What is that? It's a tank It's a tank top. That's see-through. But you can wear... Yeah, leggings. I would wear a cami you under could, it. You should wear a belt with it. Or a belt and then with the black leggings. Would you... If you say you all bought what you've got, would you all swap and yeah. wear each other's? More than likely. Oh, I yeah. would wear Sarah's, oh, not theirs. Belt. If Callie bought anything she wouldn't share with us, <laughs> I wouldn't wear it anyway. I have really cute stuff. Not really. I would definitely not wear that. Right. I would wear this. I would wear it with leggings. I'd wear that. Belt. I would not. Wear I don't that. know if I, I would, would wear, that, wear that, but I don't think I would. I would wear these. I would, I would wear, wear the, the gray. I'd wear the gray one. Not the I would wear the both of them. I would wear the. Gray. Like Julie's girls, the Durst quads are approaching a pivotal point in their lives. They're leaving high school and going to different colleges. 
it'll be the first time the girls have ever been separated. I, I, I think, think college will be good for us to establish our own individualities. We're ready to What about being apart together. from each other? That's going to be weird. That's going to be hard. What do you think it's going to do to your personalities in terms of the differences? You'll be able to figure out who you are. Yeah, you'll be able to figure out who you are without your sisters. I think I think we're all different just because we're so used to thinking people think we're so similar, where people are like, yeah, it's one of the quads, you know. If one of them does this, I bet you the other one does that too. We definitely think differently on, on a lot of stuff and we act differently and so used to people just only looking at the similarities in us. College is a perfect place to start and branch off on your own. As much as we are together and as much as we do stuff. Now the tables are going to change going off to school and, and stuff, but we'll always have something that can't be broken. We'll always share stuff that will never change, even if we're not as a part of each other's lives as we, use, we, as we have been for the past 18 years. Whilst Julie's getting to grips with her future, Back in the so UK, Jose is dealing upstairs. with present day problems. Upstairs, girls! It's so, alright, Ellie. Found what's up in here? The cat is on the carpet. The cat that I rescued from work. And it's not the first time. Oh, dear, lovely. God. It's just wrong. I think she does trust me. I think she just likes to have things carry on in her routine while she's not here. Can't do any more triangles. And whilst Jose deals with domestic Triangle life, day. Julie's getting an insight into the Durst family it's dynamic. Like, I demand that you I don't take any class. kind of group of people. <laughs> why do you talk to me like I'm stupid? Oh, well, I didn't know. Well, that's why you asked me. Do you want to just see Kendra's ethnography? The yeah, show? I asked you guys oh, that, and you didn't let me finish because <laughs> you didn't yes. stop. Listen, <laughs> all, you didn't ask me to see my paper. <laughs> oh, my God. I hope mine aren't as loud as they are. <laughs> but they're going to be, you know, like the girl said, they talk, but it gets loud because it's four of them and they're all talking over each other and then they're all answering back and, oh, my God, it's crazy. I'm going to need lots of, um, what's that drug called? <laughs> Prozac. <laughs> this week, <laughs> It's Julie's last day in America with the identical Durst oh, girls, and she's thought of a way to bring all the quads together. Hi, gorgeous. That's <laughs> Jess. Look, she's got a monkey sticking out of her mouth. <laughs> Holly, how's Nathan? I love him. <laughs> Bless. You still got your hair? Um, uh, yeah, just about. Mummy, yeah. they're not, no, they haven't got the same hair. Caddy's got a hairband on. Why? Because she likes to be different. Why do you like to be different? Because it's fun. because it's more fun. And she has three sisters that look like her, and she wants to be different. Georgie, do you think you all look the same? No. Good. 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 You don't think we look the same either. You're not the same. If we can all stay in touch. Yeah, we can yeah, stay in yeah. touch. Yes, okay. we will. We'll Skype each other. Bye. 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 Hello. Bye. It's Bye. Laura, darling. Before she leaves, Julie wants to get some final words of wisdom from someone who's been there before. We see our girls and, you know, that they're together all the time. Yeah. But even still, you and I don't even really fully know what it's like to go somewhere and have people not really know who you are sometimes. I mean, really. Yeah. We experience it through them, <clears throat> but... You know, you, did you dress yours the same when they were younger? I did, and really enjoy the, those days right now, because once they get to a certain age, they do not want to dress the same. Your girls are leaving high school mm -hmm. and going off to colleges and different mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Um, you know, a little sad, and you know, even with all the chaos and the noise and the the fighting and the disagreements and all that, it's still. 
it's going to be a big adjustment for me, I'm sure. Yeah. But, you know, it's just the next step in life. And on the other hand, your children need to move on. I mean, it's just part of life. That's where I was yeah, I wanted to put Sam. That was here when we would come. Sam applied before me. Have you got one piece of advice for me that you think would be really useful that I could take back to England? Yes, I think, I think as they grow up, it's important that you, not because you're always going to be spending time with all of them, but make sure you find your individual time with them all. And, like, help them to, like, figure out their differences and not focus on their similarities. Let them be who they want to be, you know, and not push each other's personalities on each other. It's kind of like coming to the realization as a parent and as their own sibling as to where you gotta, you gotta let go of the reins a little bit and be like, you know, let them kind of run free, you know? One hug. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Aww. Certainly one thing I've got from this weekend is that before, the thought of them going off on their own in different directions made me feel very anxious and worried and emotional. But having met the girls, I should maybe try to encourage individuality sooner rather than later so that they have a sense of independence and um, freedom from each other. And what are you looking forward to now? I'm looking forward to <laughs> getting on the plane and seeing my children. This has been an important year for the quads, with some big milestones along the way. As they've spread their wings and stepped out into the big wide world, the girls have grown and changed. Their personalities are really beginning to develop and, and they are very different. They behave differently, um, they play differently and um, so they're getting more independent and more grown up. Today is the biggest milestone so far, the girl's fifth birthday. Preparations are underway. Blown up balloons, cakes, food, banners, yeah, all good stuff. The last year's experiences have had a big impact on mum and dad. They've decided today's the day to let the girls express their individuality by choosing what they wear. Party. That might be beautiful dress, but mine's all purple. Why are you all wearing different dresses? Because we like to be different. Are you always going to dress differently from now on? Yeah. What have you got there? I think it's great. I think it's great because it means their individual personality is coming out. Yeah. It makes you look at... I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It's really weird. They look different, don't they? They look totally different. We can see it now. Oh, it's a revelation. <laughs> I've always thought that they would, it would be better if they all stuck together all the time, but of course, you know, now they're, de they're developing and, and they're becoming individuals. I see that that's not practical and not right at all. Hey! We've always done things as a, as a collective, as a, as a group, and, you know, like dressing them the same, because it's been easier. Um, but as we've sort of gone through this process, we've started to pull them apart a little bit more, and, it, and it's been nice. I can't see, so I'm just going to stop. I think as they grow and they develop and their differences become 
more different, I think our lives will probably be busier, maybe more complicated. The, well, the homework, how are we going to do four different sets of homework? There's the, you know, the wanting to look different, the peer pressure from other friends, the different friends they might have. Boys, oh my God, boys. Well, Olive's started with boys already. I uh, know. Uh, no! Not getting dog in there for me, Jane. No. Things like hairstyles, hair straighteners, shoes, if they're anything like me. Oh my God. How many pairs of shoes are we going to have? We'll have to have a whole starting, room. Starting to <laughs> You're getting a sweat. <laughs>